to Off the Shelf. I'm your host, Yvonne Wolf. Today, our special guest is Kanari Venetian. She is an English teacher and the author of A Place Called Gloomly. This book is about her experience as a teacher in Armenian mountains. Welcome, Kanari. Thank you, Yvonne. It's a pleasure to be here. Wow, that sounds like such a magical place. A Place Called Gloomly is your first book. And what motivated you to write this book? I think it happened probably the minute my hu late husband and I arrived in Gyumri. It is the second largest city in Armenia. But we selected Gyumri because it was in the earthquake center, mm. uh, earthquake zone. Because in 1988, Armenia suffered a devastating earthquake, especially up in the northern region and that's where Gyumri is. So once I got to know the people, uh, talked to them, visited them, once I met my wonderful students, and they were from uh, like eight years old, college, up to college level students, all in one class, and then also some adults came because they wanted to learn English. And um, so when I saw that, and when I saw walking down the streets, learning about the history of that ancient city, something in me stirred. And as usual, I took out my little pocket notebook and my pen and just made little notes. Uh, yeah. notes. So many books start out with little notes. Yeah, little right? notes. And so eventually I thought, there's so many stories here. Let me begin writing some articles because since the age of 13, I've been a contributor to the Armenian Weekly, an English language newspaper uh, located in uh, Watertown, Massachusetts. Mm. And this, of course, is all voluntary. And so I started sending these articles to the editor. Mm. And after a few articles, he said, um, I think you want to consider mm. writing a book because there's a lot of information here. I said, all right, I'll think about it. So once in a while, I continued writing the article, sending it to them. And once I got home, this was after our year-long um, volunteer work teaching English. My husband would teach the, uh, 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 the computer classes mm -hmm. and uh, advanced English, and I taught being, uh, beginning and intermediate English. So I got home and started doing more research on the city and was so fascinated by it. Now even more because I had two thoughts. One, I actually was able to study what the city was all about and what it had been and my recollections of all the wonderful and brave people there. So I guess it's so true when sometimes our travels it spark that interest and we read more and learn more about mm -hmm. our experience after we come back. Yes. Yeah, it is a, I think it's a, it takes a lifetime to unravel yes. what we experience. Yes. And so I'm so glad you're sharing that with us yes. in this book. Yes. Now, how do you identify yourself? Do you identify yourself as Armenian American? I certainly do. And <clears throat> this is going to get me a little emotional. Yeah. I am in love with both countries, Armenia and my adopted country of the United States of America. Because it has offered so much. And what is the much? Freedom. Just freedom to do, you know, what you wanted to do, what you want to be. And one of the most important things that I learned from my very first day in kindergarten, because my parents and I came when, we, uh, when I was about five, nearly five. The first day of school, I met this wonderful, wonderful kindergarten teacher. I couldn't understand a word she said. And I saw all the students. I couldn't understand what they were saying. So, so much like my experience coming to America yes. when I was eight. So, yeah. Yes. And yeah. What a wonderful start, beginning, yes, right? Right. And in those days, they had no translators or anyone to help you along. So I had to discover everything myself. 
and they would tell me with the little English I started to learn, you must speak English with your mother and father. But I couldn't tell them, but my mother and father don't speak English. Right. So anyway, I learned. In about a year, I learned English. And I think the greatest lesson of all that I learned in my grade school, which was from kindergarten through eighth grade, was self-reliance. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I mean, you had to do things on your own, and at home you were expected to do very well in school. No excuses. Yes. And that lesson is just sticks with yes. your whole life. Your whole yes, yes, exactly. And what I saw in the children, both you know the younger ones and the older ones, the students and the adults, their great desire to learn. It didn't matter whether how long they had to walk, mm -hmm. whether the weather was lousy because people couldn't, in general, couldn't afford car fare. So everyone, I could identify with them too because yes. I knew what they, uh, you know, what their hearts told them, and that yes. is to study, to learn. Yes, and I think that coming to uh, United States, we all have um, experienced such wonderful teachers who really welcome us. Yes, right, yes. And just so, I wanted to add, this was the, uh, in the Chicago public school system. Yes. I had marvelous teachers. You mentioned that your teachers wanted you to speak English at yes. home. But do your parents only speak Armenian or do you have another language at home? When we came, my, my mother is Austrian, my father is Armenian from Armenia, and uh, actually I was born in a DP camp in Austria, and so we were um, sent from one camp in one country to another, so it was Austria, it was France, and Germany, and then we came to the United States. So with my mother I spoke German, and with my father Armenian, and I knew French, but when we came to this country, didn't help. It did not help because <laughs> I could not speak English and my parents didn't speak English. Wow. Yes. Yes. It is definitely a journey. So, so what I thought about later on, I said, you know, this is a perfect example of how I feel about my adopted country, the United States of America, and my beloved Armenia. I, I liken it to two parents. One is the mother, one is the father, so. That is such a great analogy. I feel that there's so much of our cultures mixed here, and we have to find our own interpretation yes. of how we can, we're big enough to incorporate all of it. Yes, yes. yes. We're not one or yes. the other. We're not confused. <laughs> we're no. not split. No. We're just big enough to hold all yes. of that within us. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your journey becoming an English teacher. Was that inspired by this, this welcomeness, that this warmth that we, you feel that yes. Uh, yes. that your teachers passed on to you yes. in this country? Yes. What I liked, and I I think, each grade I learned more and more about teaching, and what would happen is I worked very hard, very shy in class. And in those days, there were about 40, 42 students in a class, and the teachers had no assistance. They did everything themselves. And I always liked them because they, were, they looked so professional. They really didn't yell at anyone. They, had, they caught your attention. And on top of that, they instilled in you a great love for learning. Mm -hmm. And I said, someday, I want to become a teacher. I want to do the same thing. Yes, and teach the generosity of spirit Yes. to, yes. to our students. Yes. Now I understand that this book is a tribute. It is not only to the eager Armenian students that you taught there, but also f your late husband, yes. Murad, yes. Who, who, uh, who this trip could not be made without. Right. Absolutely. And how were you and your late husband invited to teach there? Okay. What an opportunity. That was, that's a very nice question. One day, because I, you know, we get the Armenian Weekly every week, I saw an ad in the paper, and I, I said, oh, I think I want to do this. 
But I asked my husband, who uh, was newly retired, and I said, what do you think if we spend time in Armenia doing volunteer work? You can teach computer, and he was a chemist, analytical chemist, oh. chemist, and I'll teach English. I said, you know, this sounds great. Yeah. Let's do it. Wow. So I uh, answered the, uh, um, the, the ad, ad. Yeah. and uh, within a short time, we received a response. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in Armenia and, uh, you, know, uh, to, uh, you know, and meeting you in person. So that's how we got accepted. Wow, I think you have the perfect combination. Yes. Uh, my husband is also a chemistry teacher, so oh. wow, I can imagine this kind of a, what, you, what you have to offer. There's almost a whole curriculum, yes. <laughs> right? Yes. So, yes. so your book gives us such a reality check. You know, what would you say is a message that you hold dear from your students in the Armenian mountains? You mentioned a little bit of that eagerness to learn yes. and that determination motivation. Yes. What, what amazed me so much, even though I saw with my own eyes the hardships that they, every day they had to go through and their mothers making sure that they were neatly dressed and that they, their homework was always prepared. So that amazed me, but also no matter what their stories were, how difficult some, a child may have lost a father, may have lost a mother, uh, a child may have not had enough food to eat. They came to school with a smile on their face and an eagerness and a thankfulness. So that, that taught me so much. And I think one of the, uh, an example of resilience and to do the best you can with what you have uh, is a poem I wrote, and it is in the book, and it's called Lala. Yes, you, you have been very appreciative of the mothers who, yes. who work so hard. Yes. So I think this story tells us how you process what you saw right, yes. in a way that you can express yourself and, yes. and feel and also honor them. Yes, and it's not only the mothers, the fathers had an extremely difficult time because oftentimes there would be no jobs and they were then forced to leave the country. Many of them went to Russia mm -hmm. with their sons to work, to send money home so, another, so that the family could survive. Mm -hmm. And here's an example of such a thing where the mother is left alone with this uh, daughter and I will, it'll, I'll describe it in the poem and it's a one-room home, and the prettiest bed in the house, in the one room, is, so there are four beds, and each bed is covered with the gray woolen blanket. But the one bed had the gray woolen blanket, but there was a pink, pretty sheet over it that was like the bedspread for the daughter. And here is what the mother, every day, she had to take care of her daughter before going to work in the fields and then coming home at night had to take care of her daughter and this is her daughter Lala. Lala is little not because she is a child she never finished growing. Forever her mother's baby her father's if only. She spends her days in the Tony room where once a week her mother bakes bread, thin, round, flat bread, lavash, the first piece always for the Lord. Lala looks on as her mother bakes. She utters sound, only the Lord and her mother understand. And her mother nods, giving her lavash, the second piece always for Lala. With mangled fingers, Lala holds the bread and takes a bite, stooped and wobbling, she gurgles and grins. She crawls, then steps to the window, mangled feet barely holding her up. Ah, ah, she sings as she sits on the floor and claps. Ah, ah, she says as she rocks and points at birds flying past the window. Lala's mother looks at her baby of 38 mm. and sighs. Mm. 
Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, and this is what this mother had to go through every day. It's the pain of seeing this extremely, extremely physically and mentally handicapped child that she had to carry mm -hmm. into the Tony room that was where the, uh, they baked the bread, mm -hmm. left her there with some food on the floor because she can't sit or anything like no. that. She stayed there all day until her mother came home wow. from the fields yeah. and then would bathe her, feed her, mm -hmm. and put her in the prettiest bed in the house. Mm. And this is an so example beautiful of all the hardships these people went through mm -hmm. and yet they made the best of it. They found a little something to bring sunshine into their lives. Yes, yes. And she still very uh, starts the day with being grateful to God. Yes, this, uh, yes, yes. Now you are so kind to invite me to your book signing event at the um, Armenian Community Center at the, oh gosh, the, at the hall. Shahnazan yes, you hall. Say <laughs> yes, in Glenview. And it was such a wonderful place. And it's been there since the 1970s, I yes. read. Mm -hmm. So I have, I had a wonderful opportunity to meet your congregation and all the people who support your work. Yes. So how does it feel to be, you know, part of a community that just um, cheers you on and, uh, and invite you, of course, to other book events, book signing events, right? Well, the Armenian community is like an extended family. And the thing is, we always have the sense of belonging and there is support. And it touched me deeply when they prepare this beautiful table and then arrange to have this book signing. And I was just filled with joy when I saw uh, Armenians coming from uh, Waukegan, Racine, Wisconsin, because they had church there too, and then from the other congregations, Armenian congregations. And it, it made me feel just so good, and it made me even more determined to mm -hmm. keep on writing. Yes, yes, that is. Mm -hmm the best you can do for mm -hmm. your audience, yes. right? Definitely. Yes. So who is your publisher, and was it difficult for you to find it, or was that mm -hmm. um, that, that um, editor helped okay. you? Here's what it is. This book is published by Hyenic Press. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. on the back cover. Okay. By the way, these are all my photos in the book and on the cover. Hyenic uh, Press is the publisher of the Armenian Weekly, uh, English language paper, and also the Haidenik, the Armenian language paper, and they do publish periodicals and books. And so once I presented my book to the author, he read it, and they discussed it, they said, we are publishing this. I'm sorry, did you say you presented the book to the to editor? To the editor, yeah, because you had to send a PDF. Yes. And uh, he read it, and uh, from there they they published it. Oh, that sounds like a dream. That sounds like a yes, dream. This yes. was, this was not such a bumpy road as we no, often hear. No, it was hear. not at all. It wasn't. And I'm always, I'm so deeply um, thankful to them, appreciate all they do. And that is the reason uh, why I decided to all pro that all proceeds go to the publisher because of the tremendous work they do to um, hold her culture mm -hmm. and to encourage the youth mm -hmm. and to encourage writers. And this way they yes. can continue that legacy. Yeah, so that proceed goes to a charity. Is, is it considered a charity? Yeah, non-profit. Yes, yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. right. Yes. yes, and that they continue this connection with that mother culture and yes. keeps your love alive. Yes. Now, at the Armenian Community Center, I witnessed the blessing of your book. Now, that was so incredible. Can you tell us a little bit about what happened? The blessing of the book is a tradition. It's a secular tradition. My father, when he first published his book, it was the wine blessing ceremony. When my late husband published his book, it was the wine ceremony. I see. And then it was my turn. And actually what it is, not only is it the blessing on that person, but also um, 
good luck and success in all your future writings. Yes, so that's what it's about. And so this book here yes, is very special yeah. because this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. This wine has been spilled on here. Yes. And on the various pages. Mm -hmm. And it's a special, you know, it has a special edition. meaning. Yes, that is yes, definitely and a special the, edition yeah, is right. right. Yes. Right, that is yes. the one that you're going to yeah. have for for uh, for demonstrating for uh, right yes. now and nobody can ever um, mix it up with the other ones right. that they brought. Right. Right. So then I heard that there are four other Armenian yes. community centers. Yes. Can you tell us where and okay, one how you're is connected. in Chicago on Diversity Avenue. One is in Evanston, downtown Evanston. One is in Palos Heights and the other one is in Arlington Heights. Um, I think it's Arlington Heights, yeah. And so you are a member of the, one of The one in Glenview. Yes. But the thing is, the beauty of our church is we can go to any Armenian church, and you're just as welcome there. And uh, I, I know so many of the people, so I always feel like I'm just at home. Yes. Uh, how many of these book signing events have you um, been part of? Are you planning for? Okay, after the first one at yes. the, the one you attended, then I was invited to another one, and that was the one in Palos Heights. Again, with very the same kind of enthusiasm and support by the people. So, and after that, because of the COVID situation and all, uh, it was difficult, and but then most of the people that came to uh, the book signings, they were already from these other churches too. I see. And we did have clergy from the different churches, which was nice. So do you have any more plans for your book marketing? Oh, that's all up to the publisher. Oh, yes. yes. Uh -huh. I just do the writing, Yeah. and that's it. Yes. So does the publisher, is this the publisher in in Massachusetts? Yes. Oh, yes. So is, a yeah, yeah. is it likely that you will have a trip going to that direction? It could be one of these days. I may do now that. that. Yeah, yes. now that COVID is yes. yeah, on, the, yeah, yes. on the end of it. So I have another question. Now, sure. You, uh, Kanarik, you mentioned that you published a book and your father published a book. Now, it sounds like he has a lot of, of living experience to publish a book, but what was that book about? Oh, my father's story was about his life as a political prisoner in Siberia, wow. in the Siberian uh, prisons, and how he survived, how he was able to escape with the help of the country people, the, the Russian uh, peasants who, at risking their own life, they would help the stranger because they understood his situation in ragged clothes, wow. Siberia, unbelievable. Incredible. And yes, yes. Eventually he made his way to Europe and then to the United States. Mm. So he wrote about his experiences. And again, the Heidenik Press published that, um, all of his articles. And uh, that's how he published his book and there was a uh, blessing, you know, of the book. And then later on, my husband uh, wrote about the village life of his, his parents in uh, what is now Turkey, but it was in Govdun, and about the massacres and how his oh, family yes. mm -hmm. was uh, killed. And so he wrote about the, tr uh, the daily life of the people and the customs and traditions. And again, that book was blessed. Oh, that's a hugely significant yes. and may perhaps underreported uh, part of world history. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Do you have a quote or a short message for our writers out there? Oh, yes. I have to say that writing is not a chore. It's a passion. And as the writer continues, they realize that writing is a very good friend. Mm. It's always there for you. As long as you have paper and pencil or pen, and then later on the computer, you have a friend. Mm. So I'd like to read this. 
because I think this is how I feel also. And it applies not only to writers, but in all aspects of life. Whatever course you decide upon, there is always someone to tell you that you are wrong. There are always difficulties arising that tempt you to believe that your critics are right. To map out a course of action and follow it to the end requires some of the same courage that soldiers need. Peace has its victories, but it takes brave men and women to win them. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Wow. Boston, Massachusetts. So there's a link here. Yes. That's a yes. source of inspiration. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you, Kanarik, for being on our program. Thank you very much, Yvonne. I am greatly honored. And thank you for watching. Join us next time on Off the Shelf.